Hood Rich Radio is the voice of DJ Scream on your airways. My dog Miranda is here. We have a special guest in the building. Yeah. Let me tell her she is legendary. Okay. She goes by the name of Nicole Kane, formerly known as Nicole. Is it Beachy or Bitchy? Bitchy. Nicole Bitchy. <laughs> Told you it was Bitchy. Okay. I told right. you. All right. Welcome to the Hood Rich Radio. How you how you doing? I'm good. How nice. have you been? I've been great. Awesome. That's good. That's good. That's <laughs> yeah. Good. That's good. Why so great? Um, just uh, I'm happy to be alive. Hmm. Okay. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that's you know, listen. That people take for granted being alive. Yeah. Just being here. For some people that's not here. Facts. You know what I'm saying? I still feel like it's more to the story though. I mean, I well. If you want me to tell my story, oh, no, 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 I'm just saying, like, it's more for the story. Yeah, yeah, we got the story. I know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like, well, I'm doing great. Like, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but I just moved back to Atlanta uh, in December. Mm-hmm. I started my career here in mm-hmm. 2008 as a celebrity gossip blogger. Mm-hmm. So, coming back 10 years later, just a different person with mm-hmm. a new brand, mm-hmm. um, a new everything. Like, that's, that's what makes me happy. Mm-hmm. Good. Happy that you're happy. Thank you. <laughs> so in this celebrity gossip site, mm-hmm. it was it was so big, it was huge. It was like, um, shouts to the people that do it now, but I feel like you were really the first African-American woman to have a platform of that caliber. Um, obviously, it exposed a lot of people. Obviously, it hurt a lot of people's feelings and such. What, what was the moment or the time in the space mm-hmm. where you were like, okay, it's time to transform from Nicole Bitchy to Nicole Kane? Um, it's funny because I had that feeling like two years after I started the website. Mm-hmm. I was just like, I don't like uh, walking in rooms and being the elephant in the room. Mm. You know, you walk in a room and everybody's energy shift. Mm-hmm. That was me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I didn't like that. Um, I was scared of you at the time. <laughs> like, I, if I saw her, but I But that's the like, thing. Yeah. Like, people. I didn't even do nothing wrong, but she <laughs> finds something wrong. <laughs> people would see me and I, I think I look completely different than what they expected. What you. Can I say this? Ooh, go ahead. Oh, Lord. Well, you didn't look like Sandra Rose. When everybody saw Sandra Rose, Lord. Like, well, we expect you to be a... You, you get it. You I like yeah, it. I think... And, and there's a perception if you do that type of, uh, like, gossip or that type of news that you're, like, a low life, you look a certain way, you right. hate the way you look, you hate your life, you mm-hmm. hate everything. Yeah. <laughs> you're Sandra Rose. You, you know what? <laughs> so what made you want to get into that? Because, you know, some people wouldn't consider gossip necessarily news. Um, For me, I just started it because um, I had I was, actually my I got my start in radio. Okay. And I was an intern and then um, I learned everything about the boards and producing. Mm-hmm. And so um, I had to. Here. Yeah, what you yeah. doing? <laughs> I heard gossip and making fun of people. Today. Right. Then I had to look up celebrity news all the time for the afternoon drive mm-hmm. um, personality. And I think I got into it from there, just knowing so much about celebrities from that. Mm-hmm. At the time, the only website I really went to was All Hip Hop. So, no, you know, that was yeah. like no, way hip-hop back. Was out of here. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's how I got into the whole celebrity thing. Mm. Do you have like enemies? Like, are there do people? I, do yeah. I have ener- enemies now? Yeah, like I'm saying, like, based off of the things that y'all put out there, can you go places by yourself without worrying? Oh, I go every. Uh, well, I, I mean, I you're here, want, but we got security. I don't want to put that out there because <laughs> now, now I might can't go anywhere by myself. <laughs> but I mean, it's different because I have a different platform now, mm-hmm. and it's women. It's very empowering and inspiring, and so I can go um, wherever. I, I remember meeting Floyd Mayweather in D.C. Someone mm-hmm. had brought me to a dinner he was at, mm-hmm. and he was asking me questions like, "What's your name?" And I'm like. Nikki, <laughs> like, <Right. laughs> like right. I'm not about to tell him my real name, right. and I think he saw me later on, and he was just like, you know, I know who you are, and he was just like, why are you walking around by yourself? And I, I wasn't scared. Like I had went to the club by myself, and that's where he saw me again, and I wasn't really scared where are you like from that. Originally, um, I'm from Maryland. Oh well, you're not scared or nothing. <laughs> yeah, we saw the wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. and you know, it's funny because back then people sent private investigators to my house, oh, like. Wow. I had little things, like people would call up, uh, I had an office in New York that I shared with my publicist, and one time someone called her, as soon as I walked out the door, it was like, tell Nicole she's dead, and, mm-hmm. you know, hung up. So you get that type mm-hmm. of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I don't got them type of problems right now. Like, <laughs> so knock, knock on wood, nobody's ever pulled up? Nobody has ever pulled up, no. All right. No. Have you- don't, y'all don't get any ideas <laughs> in Atlanta. We have good energy over here. Yeah, for sure. Have you ever had, like issued an apology to someone? Like, 
like, yo, I was younger then. I was a different person. My bad. Like, has that ever happened? Or you just kind of I think, it off? Yeah, there was a, a p- Pleasure P story back in the day. Mm-hmm. And I think it really grew wings when I hopped on it. Mm-hmm. He allegedly molested someone. Yeah, but there was really that no was proof. Terrible. That was terrible. Yeah. Pleasure yeah. P had a real buzz back then. Too. Man, Y'all and I think his career. I mean, say I, sorry, right? This your chance. Say you sorry. You know what? He <laughs> say sorry. <laughs> pleasure, no, Pleasure you P had what? a wave, and it literally like. And you know. he, I think he was, uh, he was nominated for like three or four Grammys that year too. So that's like, so that, I think that was one of those times where. Uh, say sorry. Right here, uh, I already <laughs> say it again. Say it, say it. Not gonna do it uh, twice, right? No, like, but for real, like I was very sorry about that. I apologize. Like, there's no proof, you know. Mm. But back then, you you could say anything, and I think we got to a point where people um, took us as being credible. So mm. you can ruin somebody's career like mm. that. Mm. When you see TMZ post certain stuff now, and sometimes they jump the gun. Uh, Lil Wayne's dead. This person's dead. Oh, I you remember that. that. Yeah, that yeah, was horrible. Right? horrible. Yeah. When you see, when you just, just as a, a media mogul, when you see now people posting stuff that might not be factual or true, how does it make you feel? To be completely honest, I don't see any of that anymore. Like mm-hmm. I, 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 I blocked a lot of gossip sites, and I mm-hmm. blocked them because if you don't block them, then someone on your feed, uh. A like something is in right. your explore page right. and I so I don't want them to think that I think I'm too good because I've blocked them or whatever I just don't want it coming across my feed anymore mm-hmm. because I I realize like you are what you see and read and yeah. eat and all that every day and and I'm scrolling my timeline I'm seeing like everyday women like doing it mm-hmm. and so that makes me um inspired mm-hmm. and know that I can do things like, you know, my event coming up or this website mm-hmm. making it the next like own network or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. But when I'm following stuff like that, you know, I'm seeing drama, fights, mm-hmm. <laughs> who so who's cheating on who, like mm-hmm. now I think every relationship is dysfunctional. Mm-hmm. Um so I had to just switch up who I followed and what I fed into every day. How mm-hmm. does how did all this affect like your dating life and maybe your relationship personally? Well, um, she got a man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm actually very single. Okay. It's hard to date, like oh. out here when you you somebody. Okay. Okay. All right. Y'all, okay. I, I only want right. to, I only want to go there because you, men will oh, no, say, no, no, no. <laughs> when, whenever <laughs> somebody says I don't want to do it, that means they want to do it. This feels say very hot girl summer. Absolutely, say it. Feel hot girl summer say coming it. out of it. Say it. Look, I, I just feel like men say they want a ter- certain type of woman, and then that certain type of woman walks into their lives, and they're like, you know what? I'm not even ready for a woman like you yet. Yeah, it could be the other my- way around. Too. Yeah, you probably weren't ready for them. Possibly. I, I'm I'm more than ready right now. Like I I've been doing the work to be ready. Like what? For who- but but I, in your in your past, you want to know met- like what? Yes, what, what like work what? I did? What? Yes, ma'am. So, you said it. I'm I'm gonna tell you. So I met this guy. He used to <laughs> somebody hooked me up with this guy who used to be an NBA coach. Mm. And uh, he just wanted to have breakfast. Mm-hmm. And the reason why he took me to breakfast is because he was like, I I only take women I'm serious about to breakfast. Because, you know, if I take her to dinner, drinks, it might lead to something else. Mm-hmm. So we go to breakfast. And after the breakfast, I'm like, that's the type of man I want in my life. But mm-hmm. I didn't feel like I deserved that type of man at the time. I was a gossip blogger. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why would he want to date a gossip blogger? I'm talking about celebrities all the time and mm-hmm. all this negative stuff. Like, that wouldn't even look good on his arm. So when I say <laughs> that I prepared myself after that, I moved to Arizona maybe two or three months later, mm. and I went through this whole healing phase. Like and you put a tweet out, mm. I think mm. there was a tweet or something that because I remember I was following you and you started putting tweets out, letting people know that you were gonna, and then people started to feel. Yeah, safe, I was like, I to need to. And- you got saved. That, no, I didn't get saved, but I was out there and I really did a lot of self work, and that's when I was like, I gotta let this website go. Like mm. this isn't. The type of people I want to be around, mm. the type of rooms I want to be in, the type of man I want to date mm. is not going to happen with I this website. I imagine that was letting go, financially letting go. Oh, of yeah, lot, yeah. Oh, uh, for sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's, that's, that's big. But, but you say, like, it was worth it, though, right? It was absolutely worth it. Mm. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's what's up. I've had the, the, the times I've been the brokest, I've had the most peace in my life. Mm, more money, more problems. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> definitely true so now you have elevate her going down this weekend in atlanta tell us all about it yes elevate her is um (laughs) i'm laughing because i'm like another woman empowerment event but no uh elevate her (laughs) 
Hot girl summer? <laughs> yeah. <Is> that, <laughs> that we play playing City Girls. <laughs> It's a hot girl summer, a city girl summer, a elevate her summer. We go. elevating them out here. Yes, so, <laughs> okay. This weekend, we're having an event in Atlanta uh, that elevate her crawl. We're celebrating women-owned businesses, so mm-hmm. it's going to be over 25 women-owned brands. Nice. Um, we also have panels helping women to kind of elevate themselves. So we have uh, talent from CNN, well, producers from CNN, writers from Forbes, and those type of uh, publication teaching women how to actually pitch themselves mm-hmm. to get um, to get on those national platforms. And we're hearing from um, women who have businesses and they went from bootstrapping their businesses to like major retailers and mm-hmm. acquisitions. And of course, I went through an acquisition. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to talk about that as well. Right. <laughs> That's tight. But it's going to be a fun day. Henna, beauty treatments, um, shopping, you know, the whole nine. OK, dope. And let me ask you this before you get out of here. Uh, when it comes to, there's a big topic that this is going around America and everywhere, equal pay. So at the Elevate Her uh, conference, will you be talking about how women maybe should become entrepreneurs if they feel they're not compensated fairly? Or what is your take on that? Because I personally I have two sisters and a wife, and I think it's whack. I think like if the woman does the job just as good or better, she should get paid just as much or more. But if you statistically look at it, it's really bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. women don't get paid equally. What do you think about all that? Um, a lot of times we don't get paid equally because we don't know how to negotiate. Mm. You know, and it's funny because someone who stays at the same job for five years, but that her friend has switched jobs like three times, she's rene- renegotiated her salary every single time. So she more than likely is going to make more than the person that was sitting so at her job getting that 10 cent raise right, every year, right, you know? You're, you're right. That's true. That's true. Um, but I also think that not everyone is built to be an entrepreneur. And if you start calculating the hours a day that you put in as an entrepreneur to even get your brand off the ground, mm-hmm. You're not making as much as right. the person at that right. desk job right. and well, you don't have no do, benefits. When, when it does click, <laughs> you're making more one day than they might make right. in but, three months. But what's the percentage of it clicking? And so yeah. I I'm not saying it's this not to just dis- Yeah. I'm not saying this to discourage people from entrepreneurship, but it's like I think social media glamorizes the entrepreneur journey mm-hmm. and people think I'm going to quit my job and tomorrow I'm going to make mm-hmm. <laughs> however much money. And that's not the case. Like mm-hmm. half these people that are on the top have been going at it for 10 years or more. You mm-hmm. know, yeah. uh, I've been in the game 10 years. You Congratulations. know, <laughs> thank you. You're OG. I mean, it took what? OG 10 years? Nicole Kay. Yeah. yeah. OG. They say every overnight yeah. success happens in 10 years. So. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, that's my answer to that question. Okay. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And give us two or three females right now that motivate you that you kind of look up to. Oh, it's so many. There's uh, Miley Till from Curlbox. Okay. Uh, um, she has a brand Curlbox, and she also does retreats and podcasts. And she's like, I call her the uh, Oprah for black women entrepreneurs. Mm, okay. um, she's steady putting people on. And then uh, you got Morgan Dubon from Blavity, you know, mm. um, under 30 acquiring brands left and right. She mm. has a media platform. Um, there's just so many. <laughs> there's a lot. But... Um, yeah, I almost draw, drew a blank. But Atlanta is so is a place to be because it's nothing but sisterhood, black girl magic. Mm-hmm. It's changed. Like, you used to be able to put a picture up and you get all these negative comments. Now it's like, girl, you go, girl. Mm-hmm. That bag is dope. Your collarbone <laughs> shining, mm-hmm. you glowing. Like, mm-hmm. we in a different, um, you know, day and age, and Atlanta is the epitome of all of that. For mm-hmm. sure. Okay, that's what it is. We appreciate you coming to Hood Rich Radio. Give everybody that Instagram and also let them know how they can be a part of the Elevate Her Conference going down this weekend. Well, you can definitely um, find us on Eventbrite. <laughs> the tickets are only $20. Okay, okay. <laughs> I know people are like, why are the tickets so cheap? Because we want y'all to come out, have a good time, and shop and, these and, and women-owned it? businesses. Uh, it's at Mason Fine Arts Gallery. Okay, okay. Um, And then I don't know where I was going with it, but my social handle is at Hello Nicole. Okay. <laughs> And you can catch us at XO Nicole, X-O-N-E-C-O-L-E dot com. Um, and on social media, XO Nicole across social media. For okay. sure. There it is, Nicole yeah. Kane on Hood Rich Radio. We appreciate you. It's 96.7 The Beat.